I think uh, going to the schedule, we were a bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, worried when we saw a lot of uh, sunset in the morning and uh, followed by a candle. So uh, we have seen we have seen three sunsets in the morning. Vivekananda uh, sir, Satyananda sir, and uh, Dr. Palla. And anyway, we are uh, moving ahead with the candle. And uh, thank you for uh, the patient listening. Okay. <coughs> Okay, gratitude first. We would like to thank uh, Open Group for providing us this opportunity. Then our uh, group head of our practice and our knowledge management uh, director and the internal team within Oracle for Enterprise Architecture for the review comments. So before I proceed, so I would like to give a uh, quick context about what we are going to talk today. As per uh, TOGA capability framework, it is uh, Business capabilities, sorry, business uh, uh, capabilities that drive the need for business architecture, and business architecture uh, actually uh, realizes the business strategy and vision. But considering the pace of uh, technological innovations that's happening, so it is uh, very much essential that technology capability has to be a uh, very important uh, uh, enabler. To, because because of technological cap capabilities or because of technological innovation, a uh, lot of uh, new business capabilities are emerged over a period of time. So it is essential that technology capabilities are taken uh, into uh, as the first place and then taken into business. So this thought process actually emerged, you know, as uh, sir said, we were uh, working in niche areas and we were, it's a professional bias. And, uh, we were more concerned about uh, the uh, technologies and that's how we started off. But as we started off, we thought that an isolation process would help and uh, we also uh, got some kind of references in terms of blogs and exploratory studies, but we did not really get any kind of in-depth uh, uh, you know, uh, material when we started searching for this concept. So that is where we started. And uh, what we are trying to do is propose an approach, an iterative approach where technolo strategic technological capabilities are uh, an input to the business uh, capabilities. So the additional capabilities, business capabilities are derived from that and then the uh, top-down approach of uh, uh, takes over. So that is what we want to propose in this. And to illustrate that, we have used argument 3 one model based on FFC industry where you are familiar with to illustrate this point. So uh, the core team is going to be the proposed approach, but to do that we need to take a quick uh, uh, look through this content, digital disruption strategy. So what is uh, digital capability? And then enterprise architecture for digital transformation. Then EA modeling for digital strategy and they have a quick FMCG use case. This is what we are going to see today. <coughs> so this is uh, the digital uh, uh, disruption definition. So what digital disruption affects is the value proposition delivered by uh, organization. So when you, digital disruption is actually giving rise to new business models where new entrants are leveraging and they are threatening your existing established businesses. So this is uh, from uh, Harvard Business Review. So it is very clear from this that there is a massive digital disruption and it is impacting every industry. So this is an illustration of innovation at exponential speed. So if the roadmaps which were created a few years ago, they are made redundant because of uh, the technological innovation is happening at exponential speed. This is a very, very powerful quote. Disruptors don't set out to beat you at your own game. They change the rules. So these are some of the uh, uh, characteristics of uh, and uh, the disruptive new ways of growing business by exponentially growing companies. So, we are not going to uh, go through every one of them. 
So it is there is one common thread line that is coming through this. They are all leveraging uh, the social data to create new models and have a disruptive competitive advantage. So this packet is very common, it has been uh, uh, a very popular word in uh, all Gene Ross uh, backlog, sorry, uh, blocks from MIT. So the technological capabilities are readily available, but those who are leveraging those capabilities and that requires actually execution of those capabilities, they are the ones who are creating that disruptive competitive advantage. <coughs> So this is from a thesis by this design where strategic technological capability is actually supporting business strategy. So here we would like to differentiate between strategic technological uh, capability and IT uh, uh, capability. So strategic technological capability is uh, Gaining is a prerequisite for gaining competitive advantage through the technological, independent technological innovations that are happening and successful technology transfers. Whereas IT is about enabling the resources available to support an organization. Now, this is about uh, three models of IT evolution. So the first one is about where IT started supporting the business and the next stage of evolution, IT was aligning with the business and in the next stage of evolution, it is IT that is enabling the business. This was again a very powerful uh, picture representation from uh, Forrester Research. Uh, second, if you see, it is the whole thing is about the customer journey. And when we talk about customer journey, it is very uh, customer experience journey or customer journey. It is uh, very important to develop a customer journey uh, ecosystem. So that represents the relationship between all the stakeholders, the people, um, the customer, and so on. So in this case, so when we talk about uh, the uh, customer touch points along the journeys, it's all again through the digital experience. So it is more about the technological innovations happening on the front and customer uh, facing capabilities, which is actually supported by the back end uh, system. So as uh, architects, we need to connect the dots between the front end customer uh, facing capabilities where technologies have, technological innovations are happening at a very, very uh, exponential speed and the back end system. So, it is the architects who can connect the dots. So, in this slide, we are trying to capture the entire digital capability map. So, at the same time, you also use this animation to illustrate the incremental uh, digital capability that we are building on subsequently. So, this is in one step the entire digital capability map and the prioritization of those digital increments. So, when prioritization is first things first. So, first it is mobile, then it is web, and these are part of the customer journeys we are looking at. So this is the entire digital capability map that you arrived and from which you will be picking up to augment those business capabilities. <coughs> and this is the theme of what we are trying to say. On the left hand side you see uh, the uh, capability based uh, planning, then the architecture definition and the transition and the alignment to the enterprise architecture. 
So these are the isolations that we are suggesting. Morning again, uh, whatever we had in mind was, it's not about digital disruption. It is the disruptive questions that uh, Satyadana has raised today morning. So where I try to, I try to processes take a longer time. But in the all we are also trying to uh, showcase a two-speed architecture where the iterations need to be faster. This is the proposed uh, closed-loop approach where technology capability, strategic technological capability is looped into the business uh, capabilities. So this is a zoom of the, the previous one to illustrate. Now we have actually put this slide to speed architecture because in the following slide we are going to discuss about the two, two speed architecture. So here two speed is essential because the customer facing capabilities need to be developed at a much faster rate. So to get that advantage, competitive advantage. So we need to have a two-speed architecture where the front-end capabilities are modular. There are three attributes. One is modular and uh, the second is they need to be deployed very fast and the third is it should not be time-consuming and that time consumption also includes integration capabilities. They should not be very time-consuming. Whereas the back-end capabilities that support them they need to be robust and they, need, and they also have a very longer uh, release cycle. So I request UG to uh, take over from here. Thank you very much. Thank you Guru for taking the context. Uh, so uh, what we propose is the two speed architecture. Uh, the architecture principle behind this, uh, where the uh, digital enterprise uh, adopt the reference architecture of uh, as a methodology. <coughs> so, uh, in a two speed architecture, the, uh, the platform provides the integrated digital capability and business capability platform uh, along with the security and governance, which is integrated into any uh, digital platform. Uh, where the bottom four systems are uh, evolving slowly uh, in a uh, manner where it's rigid and uh, supporting the front-end uh, capability and the front-end capabilities like uh, the channel management uh, capabilities are all evolving rapidly. Uh, so nomination starts from the foundation uh, where they try to distinguish the four systems, four processes uh, where it is mostly dominated by legacy applications. So they have to first start with the foundation of uh, the uh, digitization of the core processes and then, and then expose those uh, core processes to the platform services. So the platform services provides a robust integration and information service layer through which these microservices can be exposed. And uh, on top of that, uh, early, as I was mentioning, innovation agility. So we start building the uh, innovative capability uh, by enabling programs for digital, which will enable the business to adopt it in, uh, in uh, agile methodology. That way the business services can be exposed uh, to the end customers through the different channels. So where you can see the channels uh, like mobile, web, and IoT, and stores. So that's the first principle we are after in this different structure. The second thing is hybrid. So obviously when you are mentioning about the uh, two-speed architecture, where you are talking about two hybrid uh, target architecture. So the back-end is having a slow architecture, uh, target architecture phase, and the front is having a fast phase uh, target architecture. Okay. To enable that, we need to obviously have a hybrid IT. Uh, portfolio where we have a both on-premise legacy along with cloud uh, applications where the backend things are enabling the business capability and uh, exposure through microservices and the print is all the delivering those business services. Again it is uh, agile methodology where it is business driven. So this has built, uh, as we have seen the digital map, the customers will be going through a journey. 
So we try to find the minimum viability capability required to deliver the innovative products. So again, subdividing the platform services, uh, we talk about the big data management for information exploration and mining, and then we talk about service management, uh, which is the business process oriented integration, and uh, DevOps environment and mobile app environment. And then we talk about business services uh, exposed to the digital application, like sales automation and uh, marketing automation, all digital application. And analytics, the, where the data scientists get the insight of the customer. And finally, exposed to these channels. So we have the mobile, web, IoT, and store, where the external customer touch points. Exactly the previous place where I mentioned the touch points, where they touch, we try to map the exact capabilities. So it's again, it's a building block where you're building the robust packet in the slow phase and the front phase is innovative and agile. To illustrate this, uh, we have, uh, use the FMCG use case, uh, which is transforming a lot in all the FMCG industries. And then use the, this uh, top down bottom of capability based plan. What are the key factors and driving factors uh, and the KPAs? Uh, during the uh, FMCG industry to adopt digital transfer. So these are studies uh, on those and the KPMG. And uh, I'm not going to go to each point, uh, but the key thing is the five key objectives or drivers, which is the customer centricity, again pushing this uh, to adopt the customer engagement and digital solutions, then agility by sensing uh, real-time demand and uh, an agile supply chain, Analytics to get into the real time uh, demand patterns and the customer insight. Uh, then the carbon footprint, obviously, for the sustainability to capture from the devices and the, everything converging to the central theme of digital transformation. So that is the core beginning. Okay. So just illustrate you put a simple thing, it's not so simple FMCG like this, but <laughs> just to keep it simple, uh, to put the bullet points on this. So on the consumer side, uh, we are uh, engaging the WhatsApp customer to get the brand advocacy, to build the brand advocacy, uh, and to get the offer the personal offerings to them, targeted uh, advertisements. On the end-to-end -end supply chain, uh, we try to be agile and responsible by enhancing uh, the real-time demand and uh, the patterns and get the insight and be agile on that. And obviously, optimization is keyword, uh, but again, the insight of the customer and the patterns of their buying behavior is all key for the optimization. And then the final part is fast. So, whenever you do it, it's again a fast, effective, and uh, less uh, complicated to handle. So, that is again done by the digitizing, digitizing the uh, process. So, the key thing where the FMC is moving uh, is uh, the digital. Uh, Processes and expose the omnichannel presence where you can buy from any uh, social, uh, mobile, or whatever thing and then you can return to anything. That's why most of the FMCG industries are uh, we involved in some uh, top of FMCG companies, they say. So they have written water, they find very difficult to transform to digital. The key thing is uh, the process are not digitized. So the key thing is digitized in the process, then on top of the other platform, they evolve it. So that is what most of this honestly getting cut off. So we use the Archimate 3, uh, which is uh, having this strategy modeling uh, for the capability based planning and uh, as well as it allows to track the uh, EA architecture uh, planning realization edition tech. So very good platform provided by Archimate 3 for the plan modeling strategy. So what we did is we took uh, the specialization of it to fit to the digital mapping. So we uh, use the digital capability, specialization of the console of capability, uh, then digital strategy, which is the specialization of course of action. So now we start with the uh, development methodology and uh, starting with the phase A, uh, where we try to uh, look to this uh, bottom up a top-down, bottom of the CVP approach, uh, where this is the, what we are trying to propose. Uh, where you start with the business strategy, and uh, you have obviously the capability supported. And then you need to also map the 
technology came into daily development to adopt, that should uh, add the emergent strategies. So what happens is these are deliberate strategies. The business strategy was obvious because all FMCG based on their experience, they have a deliberate strategy to do. But this are uh, IT strategy, which is a digital strategy, uh, provide the emergent strategy, uh, which only comes on the bottom. Of the so they uh, finally have a iterative process to get integrated uh, IT business strategy, which is uh, supported by key blocks of technology. Business. So this drives the uh, digital transformation program. So once that is uh, scope and the architecture and scope is done, then we iterate through this uh, uh, development iteration, PCD, where we try to find the capabilities to support that in terms of application, uh, be that uh, business application information. Thing. So again, the key thing to make it uh, agile is uh, to keep only the minimum viable capability. We are not talking about targeting. We have put a road map. So we must find, okay, but they're getting into mobile or web or whatever it is. So we take a step by step. So we find for the particular digital roadmap, uh, digital customer journey, what is the key capability required? So we just try to map it and what are the uh, business capabilities around to it. For example, uh, key thing is here we have only order management and production uh, capability required to run a normal business, whereas here we talk about data scientists uh, uh, and about the digital experience and customer engagement management. These are new capabilities which we adopt from the readily available social mobile analytical capabilities. So once the, the uh, cable to the baseline, uh, we try to put this in the integrated class. So the things are integrated. Again, the key principle is two-field architecture, where you have a bottom digital applications which are evolving slow, back-end capabilities. Then we have digital platform which will do the loose coupled architecture. Then we have the digital platform to evolve. So that is the core principle behind that. So for example, digital platform, we have the mobile analytical integration and things which makes it evolve. And uh, then in the front you have the sales automation, mobile apps, wearable, and analytics. Okay. So once that is done, uh, then we do a mapping of the maturity of the organization, digital maturity, what is the access and 2D, uh, then trying to find the gap. And once the gap is found, then we find the opportunity and the migration. Uh, then we find the work packages, then go through the transition phase. Most of the companies fail in transition, uh, digital transformation, they absolutely uh, fail. The problem is they don't plan it, uh, the incremental property. So that's where the key. They are already into the business and that's no way to disturb the business. You have to find such a way that it's smooth and it is incremental. Each increment has a business out. So we plan the incremental, like uh, mass data management, which is very key. And uh, the, uh, the mobile and uh, other things will be built on top of that. It will be able to then the back-end the capabilities can be stored more to the cloud. The problem is in the cloud era, everybody thinks, okay, we move everything to the cloud. It's a myth. Okay. Being in the cloud and we get multiple things, yeah, customer face lot of difficulty. So we have to do an uh, assessment on whether you are ready to move your digital processes or you want to move it in a sequence way. Uh, and whereas you can move the CX and the DX, digital experience, and rapid and innovative way, uh, where we are talking with. And first concept of your data management. Modern data management is very key. Now we are talking about loosely coupled architecture. So your information and the supplier, customer, geography, all the maps are very key to maintain. So uh, this is the experiment for our approach. Uh, traditionally, enterprise architecture is about uh, top-down approach, where the business uh, strategy and mission drive the capabilities and technical capabilities. So we end up in almost targeting on this bottom most area. It is the backend platform services, information services to support them. Whereas, due to the revolution of the technology era, where we are having ready level technology, and where we need to be uh, adapting the description uh, transformation, so we need to have bottom capability, uh, where it is actually having a platform services, where, where we have the analytical uh, CX and DX capability. So putting together both, top down, bottom up, capability based learning, we will be covering the breadth and width of the functionality and capability requirements of business to run. Okay. And as well as the depth. So we get all the layers of information, application, business, and the technology innovation available for the knowledge to evolve. 
So we want to just conclude uh, with this remark uh, that we talked about top down and bottom up scale to base where the IT strategy enables the EA to the innovative capability of the digital capabilities as a building block. Integrated to this. So most of the companies fail to do this. They try to take big data, okay, they go behind that, then they fail. So they have to find integrated way where they integrated both the IT and the business strategy enabled by this technology capability to a platform, again to a two feed architecture and take incremental approach of realizing this across all the channels and all the moments. Thank you.